What the thumbnail doesn't show you is that this text is constantly wiggling, which gives it this kind of liquid effect. And it uses actual text, so you can type whatever you want. Alright, let's get started. So for this one I'm using version 3.3, but all of this should work in 3.2. So let's add in an object. You can add in a mesh or a curve. I'm going to choose to add a curve though. And now we can go over to geometry nodes right here. Now with the curve selected, we can add a new node tree right here, and we're not going to be using the group input, so we can delete that. Now I want to add some text in, so we can do that with a node called string to curves right here. Now when you plug it in, nothing is going to happen because we need to specify what we want it to say, and you can type in whatever you want. I'll rotate it on the X by 90 degrees, and I'll make it centered over here. You can change this from left to center. And I do want to choose a different font also. This one has pretty sharp corners, so I'm gonna choose one that's a little more round. So you can click this folder button. And the font that I'm going to use is one that I got for free from Google Fonts, and it's called Cute Font right here. And you can see it's much more round, and this will work a little better for what we're gonna do. Now I want to resample this. So you can get a resample curve, and this is gonna change the resolution, basically how close all the points are. So I'll change this to length, and turn it up pretty high to like 0 0.01, like that. Then we can realize this. So now these are going to be treated like actual points instead of instances. And to make this look more goopy, what we're going to do is turn all of the points into a volume with a points to volume node right here. And we can make it solid with a volume to mesh node. So to make this legible, we have to turn down the radius size. So let's set this to size right here. And we can turn the radius down pretty low and also the voxel size. We should turn the voxel size to maybe 0 0.02. And we can turn the radius to 0 0.04 like that. So now it's a little easier to read. The smaller you make the voxel size, the higher the resolution will be. So you have to be pretty careful. If you turn this too low, it might crash your computer. And one thing about the uh, volume to mesh node is that it makes things pretty jagged. So to make this smoother, you can do one of two things. The first one is a smooth modifier over here. And you can just turn this repeat up pretty high. Um, it only goes up to 30, but you can type in higher numbers. You can type in like 100 and it will smooth it even more. And you can see it's kind of getting that goopy liquid effect. Another way is something I showed in a previous video. I actually have in my asset browser the node that we used. Uh, I just called it smooth mesh right here. And it pretty much works the same. You just turn it up and it will smooth it out the same way. So I'll put a link to that video where I show how to make this, but if you don't wanna do that, you can just use the smooth modifier. You can see that some of the letters uh, have holes in them, and I don't like that. There's a way we can actually make our letters thin or thick, and that's with a set position node. And let's preview that with Alt, Shift, and left click. And we want to offset it by the tangent direction. This is only going to work for curves. Luckily, um, this outputs curves, and then we realized it, so they're actual real curves. So we can plug the tangent in here directly, and it will immediately explode because it's too strong. So we need a uh, vector math node. We can drop that in, and we can set this to scale like this, and this will let you change the strength. You can see what it's doing is kind of pushing things in the direction that the curves are already going, um, and that's not exactly what we want. We don't want it to be pushing in the direction of the curve. We want it perpendicular to the curve, like 90 degrees from it. So we can rotate the curve tangent right here. We can grab a uh, vector rotate and set this to Euler. And I believe the one that we want to rotate is the Z axis right here. And when you rotate the Z by 90 degrees, it should be making it thicker or thinner. And then you can, you know, change that effect with the scale node right here. And you have to move this by really small amounts. So if you're struggling to move it really slowly, then you can use a math node set to divide. So we can just search for divide right here. And what I like to do is set the second value to be a thousand. And now the first value will be a lot smaller. So you can move this really slowly now. All right, now let's look at it again over here and we can see what it's actually doing. So we can either make it thinner like this so that there are no holes or we can turn it up higher and eventually we get this kind of bubble letter effect like this if you turn it up too high it will start to break so there is kind of a sweet spot and again this is something that works better when the text is round because if it's really sharp you'll get more overlapping like this and also remember that you have to realize this or else it won't work properly 
Now I want to add the animation effect because right now it's completely stationary. So the way we can do that is by making some space right here and we're going to add another set position node like this and we're going to distort it with some noise. So we can bring in a noise texture and to get it to distort you can plug the color directly into the offset but you know it's not exactly the effect that we want so we need to add some other nodes first. Let's add a subtract node. It's the vector math subtract node right here. We'll subtract it by 0.5 and this will keep it from floating away. And we can add another one and we can set this one to scale and this will help us control the strength. So it's still just looking like liquid, but if we turn it down a little lower, we can actually, you know, still read it. And then if we change this noise texture to 4D, we can change the W to make it animate like that. So I want to turn the detail all the way down and this will make the texture a little smoother. And then we can animate the W with a scene time node. So just search, search for time. And now when we press play, it should animate like this. Now this is going pretty fast. So if you want to make this slower, what you can do is just divide the seconds right here. We can get a math node and drop it in and set it to divide. And the higher you turn this up, the slower it will move. So you can see it's moving pretty slowly now. If you want this bridging to happen less often, one thing that helps with that is turning the voxel size a little lower. But when you do that, it's gonna get a lot slower in the viewport. So you can set this to 0 0.01, and you, then you can set the radius to be a little lower, like 0 0.02. And it will bridge less, but it'll also be thinner, and it will be slower. Also, you can see we're at like 14 frames per second. When you render it out, it should be fine though. It shouldn't take you know, forever. One thing that I don't like about this is how thin it is. So if you want to make it thicker, there is a way to do that. And we can basically just duplicate our curve a few times. We can do that with a duplicate elements node right here. And we want to set this to duplicate splines and we can get another set position. I'll just duplicate this one. And I'm making sure to do this before uh, the noise is affecting it. That way all of our duplicates are being affected by the noise also. Now what we can do is plug the duplicate index into the offset of the set position. And when we turn this up, you'll see that we are actually getting duplicates, but we want to control where they are a little better. So we can do that with a vector math node set to multiply. So I'll drag this out and search for multiply. Now, when we plug this in, we'll be able to decide how strong we want it to be and on what axis. So because we rotated this uh, 90 degrees, we want to move this on the Z axis now like that. And let's just take a look at this node right here. You can see how close they are to each other. I want to keep these pretty close so that they merge together pretty well when we, you know, turn it into a volume. So I set it to like negative 0 0.01 and now we can turn the volume up quite a bit higher like this and it will make it thicker. And like I said, I am doing this before we add the noise. That way the noise is affecting all of the duplicates separately like this. All right, now let's take a look at it. Be careful turning this up high because it will get quite a bit slower when you do that. And then to make it look a little smoother. You can shade it smooth with a set shade smooth node right here. And if you want to add a material, you can use a set material node right here. So we can add just something simple. So I added a new material over here and then we can set the material like that. Now let's go into look dev and I don't want to see the background. So I'll go to render properties right here down to film and turn on transparent. Go back over to materials and I'll add something very simple. I'll just make this uh, kind of green and I'll turn the roughness down pretty low. So now we have this shiny green blobby thing and it's a little slow in the viewport, but when you render it out, it'll look pretty nice. If you want the project file from this video or any of my other videos, you can find them on Patreon, along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.